This is not my house. Their house may be damaged. The only thing you can do is get your car and get out. Right now as you're watching this, a massive storm system thousands of miles away in the Pacific has just unleashed something that will reach your coastline in ways you might not expect. The ocean is sending a message, and it's traveling silently beneath the surface at hundreds of miles per hour. What makes this different from any typical storm warning is that these waves are invisible killers. They don't announce themselves with crashing sounds or dramatic visuals. Instead, they slip beneath the ocean's surface, carrying devastating energy that only reveals itself when it's too late. Scientists monitoring real-time data have detected something that should concern every person living near or visiting the West Coast in the next 72 hours. The numbers coming in from ocean monitoring stations are triggering alarm bells among forecasters. A new Pacific storm system has just begun generating what oceanographers call long-period swells. These aren't your typical waves. While normal ocean chop might have intervals of 5 to 10 seconds between crests, the waves now heading toward California, Oregon, and Washington are packing intervals of 14 seconds or more. That might not sound significant, but here's why it matters. These longer intervals mean each wave is carrying exponentially more energy, penetrating deeper into the water column and building power as they race across thousands of miles of open ocean. Live satellite feeds from NOAA's advanced weather systems show a monster low-pressure system spinning near 40 degrees north latitude. The storm's fetch, that zone where wind transfers energy to water, stretches for hundreds of miles, and it's aimed like a loaded weapon directly at the United States coastline. Wind vectors are aligned perfectly to channel maximum energy straight toward populated beaches and harbors from San Diego. This is historic flooding that goes all the way back till somebody started keeping a record. to Seattle. What's particularly alarming is how these waves travel. Unlike wind-driven surface chop that loses energy quickly, long-period swells move through the deep ocean with minimal energy loss. They can cross the entire Pacific Basin while maintaining their power, only revealing their true strength when they encounter shallow coastal waters. It's like a freight train running silent until it hits the platform. The physics behind this phenomenon explains why coastal communities should be on high alert. When waves have longer periods, they're not just surface disturbances. The energy extends deep below, sometimes reaching all the way to the seafloor, even in relatively deep water. As these waves approach the continental shelf, that deep energy has nowhere to go but up. The waves slow down, compress, and grow dramatically in height. A swell that might be barely noticeable in deep water can transform into a towering wall of water as it encounters the shallows. Marine forecasters are particularly focused on that 14-second threshold. Years of data have shown this to be a critical tipping point. Below 14 seconds, waves behave relatively predictably. Above it, the game changes entirely. The same 6-foot wave height becomes far more dangerous when the period extends from 10 to 16 seconds. The longer period means more water volume is in motion, creating stronger currents, higher run-up on beaches, and devastating impact forces against coastal structures. Yeah, that's a lot of water. Current forecast models paint a concerning picture. The leading edge of this swell train is expected to reach the outer continental shelf within 48 to 72 hours. But here's what makes the situation even more precarious. The timing of arrival coincides with some of the highest tides of the month. 
When long period swells meet high tides, the results can be catastrophic. Tide predictions for major coastal cities show water levels will be elevated by six and a half feet or more during the swell's expected arrival window. This isn't just about bigger waves, it's about the cumulative effect of multiple forces working together. The high tide lifts the baseline water level, then the long period swells stack their energy on top. The result is water reaching places it normally never touches, with forces that can undermine seawalls, erode cliffs, and sweep away anything in its path. The West Coast's geology makes it particularly vulnerable to these conditions. Unlike gradually sloping beaches that can dissipate wave energy, much of the Pacific coastline features steep cliffs, rocky outcrops, and narrow beaches backed by vertical walls. When long period swells hit these formations, the energy has nowhere to go but up and over, creating massive surges that can overtop barriers and flood areas far inland. Recent storms have already weakened coastal defenses. Surveys conducted after previous high surf events reveal alarming erosion patterns. In Oregon, monitoring sites near Newport show over three feet of cliff retreat in just the past few weeks. California's iconic Highway 1 has multiple sections flagged for emergency inspection with visible cracks and undercut pavement threatening to give way. These weakened areas become failure points when the next round of powerful swells arrives. The infrastructure designed to protect coastal communities is showing signs of fatigue. Seawalls bear fresh scars from overtopping waves. Harbor jetties designed for normal conditions are being tested beyond their limits. Concrete barriers show exposed rebar where the ocean has torn away protective layers. Each storm leaves these defenses a little weaker, a little less capable of handling the next assault. No, we're not. Do you see this right now? He's floating. Uh-oh. Oh, no. <gasps> What makes long period swells particularly dangerous is their deceptive nature. Between sets, the ocean can appear calm, even inviting. Beachgoers see gentle waves lapping at the shore and assume conditions are safe. Then, without warning, a set of long period waves arrives. The first might push water unusually far up the beach, the second builds on that. By the third or fourth wave in the set, water is surging into areas that seemed impossibly far from the ocean just moments before. Emergency managers are taking no chances. Closure orders are already being issued for high-risk areas. Harbor masters from Crescent City to San Diego are evaluating whether to restrict bar crossings, those treacherous zones where rivers meet the ocean. At Humboldt Bay, Tillamook Bay, and other notorious bar crossings, even experienced commercial fishermen are being warned to stay in port. The human factor adds another layer of concern. Despite warnings, people are drawn to the ocean during high surf events. They want to witness nature's power firsthand. But these aren't ordinary storm waves that crash and retreat predictably. Long period swells can surge far beyond expected boundaries, sweeping people off seemingly safe viewing points. Jetties and rocky outcrops that normally provide great vantage points become death traps when these waves arrive. Local authorities are mobilizing resources in anticipation. Lifeguard stations are extending hours and positioning rescue equipment closer to known trouble spots, Warning signs are being moved farther back from normal positions. Parking areas near beaches are being evaluated for closure, especially those low-lying lots that have flooded in past events. The science behind predicting these events has improved dramatically, but the window for action remains narrow. Sophisticated computer models can now track swell generation and propagation with remarkable accuracy. Satellite technology provides real-time views of storm development. Networks of ocean buoys relay constant updates on wave heights and periods. Yet despite all this technology, the fundamental challenge remains. These waves travel fast, and once they're generated, nothing can stop them. For coastal residents and visitors, the next 72 hours represent a critical period. The intersection of high tides and long period swells creates what emergency managers call a perfect storm scenario not in the meteorological sense, but in terms of coastal impact potential. The afternoon high tide cycles, particularly around 2.30 p.m. Pacific time over the next three days, represent peak danger periods when multiple risk factors align. The economic implications extend beyond immediate safety concerns. 
Coastal businesses dependent on ocean access face shutdowns. Commercial fishing fleets lose valuable days at sea. Tourism operators must cancel activities. Property owners watch nervously as each storm chips away at their buffer between ocean and investment. The cumulative cost of these increasingly frequent and intense events is forcing communities to reconsider long-term coastal management strategies. Climate scientists note that these extreme swell events are becoming more common as ocean temperatures rise and storm patterns shift. What used to be considered rare is now happening multiple times per winter. The baseline has shifted, and coastal communities are struggling to adapt to this new normal, where 14-plus second swells are no longer exceptional but expected. As the countdown continues toward the arrival of this latest swell, the message from experts is clear. Respect the ocean's power and heed all warnings. The difference between a close call and a tragedy often comes down to being in the wrong place at the wrong moment when these invisible trains of energy finally reveal themselves at the shoreline. The ocean doesn't care about human schedules or desires. It operates on its own timeline, with forces that dwarf our ability to control or resist. The best we can do is understand, predict, and adapt. Right now that means staying informed, staying away from dangerous areas, and staying alive as another Pacific storm sends its message across thousands of miles of open ocean. For anyone near the coast over the next few days, remember that calm-looking seas can transform in an instant when long-period swells arrive. No photograph, no fishing trip, no beach walk is worth risking your life. The ocean will still be there when conditions improve. The question is whether you will be. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.